Hey, what's going on everybody on YouTube? EXO coming at you here in the midst of the brand new home theater room fully equipped with our Sono Praxis version 1 tower speakers. The full build video is online on YouTube, but man, can you hear that? What is that nasty noise? Reverberation! Holy crap, this room is full of hard surfaces, a little bit of crown molding on the ceiling, but besides that, we have got to get some treatments in this room with maybe some foam pads, maybe some base traps. So in this video, we're going to go through some of the areas in the room and talk about some of the ways that we can treat them. This will be the first video kind of testing and introducing the space for the home theater. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the problem areas in the room right now. All right, so the first area we got to pay attention to just so happens to be right behind us on the first side wall reflection. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any curtains or fabric to kind of aid with that first reflection. Right now, we've just got some hard blinds. So what we'll have to do is go ahead and add something like that from Joanne's Fabrics. Or I had another idea to kind of help with this having an insert of Coroplast with actual acoustic foam sprayed right onto it so you don't have to damage your wall with like 3M Super 77. So those are a couple ideas to handle the first wall right here, just so we can have some absorption from those direct um, reflections coming from our tower speakers. Another problematic area occurs right here on the front of the floor with another reflection interfering with the direct sound of your speakers. So minimizing this little bounce with some carpet and we have some nice high rise carpet with some grooves. Periodically there's these little grooves in the carpet which will aid with some scattering of some sound waves. So really any way of diverting these potentially interfering frequencies is always going to improve your sound quality. Another thing we're gonna try our best to tame are the high pressure and low pressure nodes uh, caused from standing waves in this room. Obviously the rooms aren't optimal because it's not a very big room, but it does meet Bonello graph. So ideally if we clammed up a little bit of base trappage here in the corner, maybe we could tame some of the hot spots in the room. Have you ever gone from the front of your room to the back of your room and notice how the bass gets louder, quieter, louder, depending on where you stand? Well, those are caused from large sound waves trying to fit inside a small room. So you're actually noticing low troughs, nodes, high points of pressure, low points of pressure. So being able to avoid that with just the dimensions of your room already gets you like two steps ahead of the game. So essentially we'll want to add some sort of base traps in the corner of the high spots of the room because that's where a lot of the high pressure buildup tends to be toward the wall nearest the boundaries. And speaking of boundaries, you've probably heard this a thousand times on the internet when dealing with home audio. And that is do not put your speakers in the corner of a room or directly against a wall. Now, why is that? Is there some sort of logic behind it? Well, yeah, it's kind of like what we were just talking about there. You notice how there are high points and low points, especially high points in the corners of rooms because that's where low pressure energy can sort of build up. Well, if that's where your source material is playing from, you can actually exaggerate that symptom because you're originating from a point of high pressure. So if you pull that speaker away from the wall, you'll reduce that boominess and you'll even out to a more flat and generally more appealing response. So with that said, you're probably wondering, well then why on earth do I have these speakers up against the wall? Well, honestly, that's kind of how I always designed them because of the space limitations of my last project room. And these towers have the ports on the front. If these ports were on the back, oh my good Lord, then we would have some serious problems and I would indeed have to pull them away from the wall, at least the uh, width of this opening. And speaking of more reflections, we're not out of the woods yet. We've got another problem right here on the ceiling, but as you can see, we've got a little bit of a troublesome thing, a chandelier slash lamp, and we're gonna have to go around that with some treated foam. And also I'm gonna take some of that second skin rope 
and put a small little um, dab around the glass where it meets the metal housing, just in case there's any metal vibrations coming from these lights. But sadly, that won't be our only source of unwanted and annoying noise when you're in the heat of the moment, especially movies, very important. Our television has such a cheap housing that our base, our subwoofers, actually flex the back panel. And you can hear it, especially on those really low, scary moments on Netflix, and God, those subsonic drops make this TV sound like crap. So a little bit of TLC on this plastic panel, as well as the back um, of this, will help with the direct effect from um, everything up here for the entertainment center, which I've gotten some questions about, guys. People love my entertainment center, but they don't know it's only like 20 bucks on Amazon. Nothing special here, guys. Click in metal shelf, and this is what I found. It's gonna change, but it's good for now. Housing all of our gear uh, right here off our active processor. Overall, everything has been sounding real good. We've done a couple different movie nights, but there is one little problem that we haven't talked about in this video that is plaguing so many listening rooms, home theater rooms that I see, that man, we definitely just gotta talk about it. Let me show you what this is. So you've got your room or plans for your room pretty much all ready to go and then you forget one big factor. Sorry about the lighting here for a second. Holes, massive doorways, and maybe not just one, maybe you've got several or multiple, who knows? What this does is creates basically a huge porthole for all your potential energy to kind of escape. So what we're gonna do is address this with some of that wood that we built for my desk it has that nice decorated lamination on it. We're gonna freaking stick some Velcro and make a makeshift door right up here, man, because there is no hinges, there's no spot for a door. We're gonna put some Velcro and uh, some stuff that won't be damaging the paint job, and bam, we'll have ourselves a door right there. And I'm thinking of also a makeshift slider for over here, something to incorporate with going this way and closing it back up. So if you were like me and had pretty much a perfectly rectangular room, perfect for a home theater, and the only thing that was killing it was a big wide open door like that, you know, chances are it's probably gonna cause a problem. You should definitely consider taking care of that with maybe a piece of plywood, maybe even some coroplast with some of that Velcro I was telling you about. Just something to, to get that void filled up, you know what I mean? It'll make a world of difference, I swear. And another thing that's gonna make a world of difference once we finally get everything situated is our power situation. If you've been following my Facebook page, you have been Ah, while well, following the journey of electrical nightmares because there's so many combined circuits in this house. This dining room is tied in with the kitchen as well as the living room lights. So I only have 15 amps. So what I'm gonna do is something rather unique. I'm gonna be plumbing through other circuits in the house. So we'll have 15 amps for the tap outlets in here. We're gonna bring in another 20 amps from our GFI circuit in the kitchen. And then we're gonna bring in another 20 amps from our outdoor circuit right here beyond this wall. So really we're gonna have what, like 55 amps of potential um, energy uh, right here at disposable at our fingertips. So we're gonna have the Crown XLI amplifiers separated with our active crossover networks with both the Harman Kardon and the Behringer DCX2496. I'm gonna be doing a whole video on this stuff, guys, but you gotta do everything in order. And right now, we're trying to take care of a little bit of treatment in here. How does it sound right now in the corner? Not terrible, but we still need to address these issues. So if you guys are interested in this project, this process, this fun time, a lot's gonna be going down here and we're all gonna be learning a heck of a lot. This is gonna be my first time fully sound proofing or sound treating a room. You can never really sound proof a room unless you go from the construction process up. But what we're gonna be using is some nice three inch wedge foam from Sound Assured, and we'll be doing a whole video on that. We'll be including you guys in on it, and maybe we can even get them to hop on board with the EXO channel and give some good deals, maybe some bundles, some home theater stuff, man, who knows? So make sure you stay connected and subscribe here to the EXO YouTube channels as we get closer to starting this whole project. We just got a lot of stuff to handle inside the garage with some mold. So once the space to work in is all taken care of, we are gonna be starting to put in some work with our Sonopraxis home theater room. Oh yeah, so much fun here, you guys. Slap a big old thumbs up if you just love 
tinkering with speakers, anything audio related, man. And oh, awesome surprise for you guys. Just scored amazing paradigm set of Monitor 9 V1s on Facebook. So we're gonna do like a little tower speaker comparison with something that's supposedly way better. I've had comments about how these speakers are ugly and they probably, oh, they must sound like shit. But that's just from people who are just trolling me all the time. So I'm gonna compare them with a pair of Polk Audios and a pair of Paradigm floor standing speakers. Can't go wrong with a little fun um, testing and comparison video there. So it'll be something fun to look forward to. So until the next video, this is EXO. Signing out inside the home theater room, having some fun. I hope you guys are having a good day. Thanks for supporting the EXO channels on and on Patreon. Everything you do brings a big old smile to my face. So thank you guys. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram and a good old Patreon page. I will talk to you guys in the next one. This is EXO signing out. Have a happy Friday. <sighs> I can't wait to start jamming today. Talk to you later.